So this is it, the last film of the Vengeance trilogy. Lady Vengeance was released in 2005 and directed by Park Chan-wook and is about a girl who was falsely imprisoned for a crime she didn't commit and now that she's released, she wants revenge on the person who actually did it. And I had some high expectations going into this movie. I think I mentioned this in my previous Mr. Vengeance review that since this was the last film of the trilogy, I expected Park Chan-wook to finally perfect his craft. So I really was looking forward to what he did with this film. And I'm going to state this straight off the bat. This movie is somehow even worse than Mr. Vengeance. Like the plot is incredibly confusing, especially towards the beginning. There's way too many side plots that go on, especially with all the ladies' fellow inmates. So I was just like completely lost and I had to rewind the movie multiple times to understand what was happening. And execution is quippy, but in the end, incredibly boring. And I was pretty much just uninterested in the movie most of the time. The only time that I even got slightly interested was toward the ending, but even then, it wasn't even that much. And the themes of vengeance that this movie tackles are a bit better than Mr. Vengeance because at least it's a bit more clear, but still it's really bad since there's no overall message to the whole movie behind it all. At least I didn't find one. And really, I do have to congratulate this movie since it's been a really good while since I was this bored while watching a movie, so there's that. So our protagonist is incredibly boring. She's pretty much a cliche revenge driven protagonist, like the one that closes themselves off from the rest of the world and is only focused on their revenge. Like really, I can't even remember her name. She is easily the least compelling protagonist of the entire trilogy. And then we have our antagonist who is hardly even a character. Like at least for the other two movies, they actually gave their antagonist somewhat of a character and spent some time developing that character. But in this movie, he's really only there just to be the victim of her revenge and hardly anything else. And the protagonist inmate friends, I honestly don't even remember them. Like seriously, I don't even remember what they look like except from that fat lady because um, she does some pretty wild things in the movie, but that's about it. Like at least they could have gotten this right, like even if they got the plot completely wrong, protagonist completely wrong, antagonist completely wrong, at least they could make a compelling set of friends that could be relatable, but they couldn't even do that. And one thing I really hated about this movie is that it acts like its characters are a lot more sophisticated than they really are, making them seem deep and philosophical and like they have their own motivations, but really they just come off as dumb. So here's where I'm going to come to the one thing that I can actually give this movie credit for and that's it has some pretty good cinematography and probably the best of the entire trilogy. Like I really like the shots that they used and the way this entire movie is edited is really pleasing to see. And I also really liked how they were able to change up their style to fit the tone that this movie is going for. Like sometimes this movie feels like a heist movie, sometimes it feels like a psychological drama, sometimes it feels like a thriller, so I really did like the versatility of it. But overall the cinematography can actually be a detriment to the plot and make it even more confusing, especially the editing part, when we have a lot of fast paced editing from shot to shot with a few frames to spend on each one, like it really can get very confusing to someone who's already lost to begin with. And the soundtrack is also pretty boring, I mean I kind of expected this at this point. But in conclusion I will say that this movie had the best presentation of the whole trilogy Old Boy comes to a close second, but I feel like this one beats it. And it really does make me sad considering how bad the rest of the movie is in comparison to this. So in conclusion, I'll give Lady Vengeance a 1 out of 10. And while it has good cinematography, don't be fooled, as underneath all of those seams, there's hardly even a film there. And now that I'm done the trilogy, I might as well rank them, and as expected it goes as number 1, Old Boy, the number 2, Sympathy for Mr. Vengeance, and number 3, Lady Vengeance. And while I wasn't expecting this movie to be better than Old Boy, I mean that is a pretty freaking high standard to be, I also wasn't expecting it to be this bad. But one thing I have noticed with this trilogy is that the director definitely has seemed to become a lot more confident in his style as the trilogy went on, but ultimately most of the movies still lack any sort of substance and it just leaves me feeling like he was just a one hit wonder. So anyways, I'd recommend this movie to anybody who just likes mindless art house films. If you're one of those types of people, then definitely go give this a try. 
I thought that the worst that this trilogy could offer had already been past me. But little did I know about the steaming dumpster fire disguised as a pile of gold that was about to hit me. This trilogy was honestly better left untouched.